Hello my dear friends, it's my pleasure and great honor to share with you this very important lecture about rule of echocardiography in TAVI. Transcatheter aortic valve implantation has dramatically changed the care of patients with severe aortic stenosis. Echocardiography plays an important role in pre-procedural planning intra-procedural implantation guidance and long-term follow-up of patients undergoing TAVI. Pre-procedural TE with utilization of 3D echo provide a good alternative in patients with contraindication for CT such as renal dysfunction and known contrast allergies. So what is the role of echocardiography in pre-procedural planning in patients undergoing TAVI? The first rule is to identify the type of aortic stenosis and to confirm the severity of aortic stenosis by accurate estimation of aortic valve area using continuity equation. The second rule is to exclude the presence of sigmoid septum or basal septal hypertrophy, which may lead to balloon migration when using the balloon expandable valve. Prominent septal hypertrophy has also been associated with EV block and the need for permanent pacemaker implantation post TAVI. Hemodynamically significant LVOT obstruction due to septal hypertrophy is contraindication to TAVI. However, there are reports of successful implantation performed with modification of the TAVI technique for such patients. The third rule in the pre-procedural planning is identification of aortic calcification. Severe asymmetric calcification of aortic valve leaflets may result in incomplete expansion of the valve and result in paravalvular regurgitation. It is also important to exclude bicuspid aortic valve. Bicuspid aortic valve not preferred with TAVI for two reasons. Higher incidence of paravalvular leak due to elliptical opening leaving two holes on either side of the processes and its association with aortopathy with more incidence of vascular complications. And another very important point is mitral valve assessment. Aortic annulus is in close proximity to the mitral valve apparatus. Placement of the valve too low in the LVOT can encroach upon the anterior mitral valve leaflet. Dense calcification within the aortomitral curtain or mitral annular calcification may increase the risk of paravalvular regurgitation due to asymmetric expansion of the valve. Moderate to severe mitral regurgitation is seen in up to 48% of patients undergoing TAVI. During implantation, the guide wire or delivery catheter may interfere with the mitral subvalvular apparatus and worsen the degree of mitral regurge. Worsening mitral regurgitation is included in the differential diagnosis of acute hemodynamic instability during implantation and as such the operator should be aware of any baseline mitral insufficiency. Another very important rule of echo in pre-procedural planning is to exclude left ventricular thrombus which is considered a direct contraindication for TAVI and should be excluded prior to the procedure. It is also important to assess the coronary ostia using TE 
to measure the distance from both coronary ostia to aortic annulus by utilization of QLAB software in 3D echo. Echo can identify the risk for coronary obstruction by the valve. It is also very important to assess the aortic annulus. For accurate measurement of the aortic annulus minimum dimension and the maximum dimension for a choice of the proper size of the prosthesis. If we have undersized prosthesis, this will result in mismatch or paravalvular leak, while oversized prosthesis leads to transvalvular central regurgitation due to improper leaf leaflet excursion. It also helps in assessment of the proper access site. TE help to choose the proper axis, the presence of mobile plaques or thrombi in the descending aorta or aortic arch is contraindication for femoral axis. So with assessment of the axis, you must obtain two perpendicular views of the descending aorta and aortic arch to exclude the presence of mobile thrombi and this can be done using the explain mode in 3D echo. What is the role of TE in TAVI as regard intra-procedural guidance? The role of TE include proper valve selection by adequate sizing, assessment of the valve position and the function immediately after deployment, identification of complications. After deployment of the valve, if there is paravalvular leak, echocardiography guided balloon dilatation can be used to decrease the paravalvular regurgitation. TE can also unmask the reason for hemodynamic decompensation during TAVI. It can confirm the proper device deployment. It can detect coronary artery obstruction. It can exclude pericardial effusion and the cardiac tamponade can assess the presence of severe mitral incompetence, can detect aortic injury or dissection, left ventricular perforation, or even device embolization. And finally, what is the role of TE and the echocardiography in the post-procedural evaluation? Echocardiography remains the standard for long-term follow-up for evaluation of the prosthetic valve structure and function and to evaluate the effect of TAVI on myocardial function and to detect the late complications. And this nice flowchart summarizes the echocardiographic follow-up for patients underwent TAVI. It starts with visual appearance to assess for the stent position and the cusp mobility and the cusp thickness and the color flow doubler, either normal or there is a TAVI malposition. And then to assess the hemodynamics by assessment of gradient across the valve peak velocity across the valve, effective orifice area, and the indexed effective orifice area, and to detect aortic regurgitation, and to assess the other structures such as mitral valve and coronaries, and finally to assess the cardiac function as regard left ventricular size and dimension and function and right ventricular size and function, assessment of stroke volume and cardiac index, 
and to exclude the presence of coronary obstruction, aortic dissection, aortic hematoma, mitral valve encroachment, and to assess the permanent pacemaker if it was deployed post the procedure, and to detect the valve thrombosis. So my final take home message, echocardiography is a key aspect of care in patients undergoing transcatheter aortic valve implantation. Goals of pre-procedural multi-modality imaging for TAVI include ensuring the patient's suitability, assessment of the access site, selection of the proper valve, developing a procedural plan, Goals of imaging during a TAVI procedure include proper valve sizing, providing immediate assessment of the valve position and function, and immediate identification of complication. Echocardiography is essential for long-term follow-up after TAVI. Thank you so much.